Kim Maldonado, I'm the program director. We're going to be looking at logging into the applications that you need. First one is VSP, which stands for Volunteer Scheduler Pro. And that's how you'll be able to go in and sign up for your shifts. And if we have any meetings, this is how I ask people to sign up so that I know they're coming. Link and Learn, this is going to be an overview of how to get into Link and Learn. This, um, in the past couple years, we've always seemed to have issues with Link and Learn. Uh, we might get started a little bit earlier than other programs, but it is not going to be available until mid-November to sign in and get your account. I will send an email out once it is up and running so that you um, can go in and get set up. This is where you will take your test. Tax Slayer is the application that we use to do our taxes. Um, we have a, uh, the IRS pays for Tax Slayer, but um, it is more specific to LIDA. Um, we also have in Tax Slayer, we have all of the forms that we use, as I mentioned, federal, state, local, as well as PA 1000, which is the rent rebate and tax, uh, property tax rebate. And I'll just look real uh, quickly at our sites um, and kind of the procedures. Most of these will be about the same at every site that you go to. Um, there may be one or two that will do things a little bit differently, but your site, co site coordinator will tell you about that once you are at the orientation for each particular site. So first thing we're going to do um, by your side there, I think some of you have found it, I have the handouts from today, and then there should be a sheet underneath it that says 2025 Lighter Resources. These are some of the things that you will be using um, during tax season. Uh, we have two different kinds of machines that we use. We have a ThinkPad and we have a Chromebook. Uh, the password for the ThinkPad is 0245. If you have a Chromebook, it is VITA in all caps, 2020 exclamation point. So if you can go ahead and turn on your machines. I gave you the sheet because <laughs> there will be a lot of passwords. Some of them are very long. Uh, once you get into um, Tax Slayer and are at uh, sites, Depending on how many sites you work at will depend on how many logins you will have into Tax Layer. Each site has its own account, so we have separate logins um, for each site. All right, so click on Google Chrome. Everything we do is Chrome. Uh, everything we do is web-based. Did I say Google Chrome? Chrome. <laughs> everything is web-based. And you want to find, um, it says Rotunda is the tab, or maybe it says VSP. Everyone's in VSP, and that's what, you're all ahead of me here, so this is what you would see once you go to the link. And after that, at the um, dashboard, this is what you will see. And what I would like you to go into for the first time is my profile, and I'd like you to take just a second. I only added your name and your email address, if this is the correct email address, and I will tell you, yeah, with this, uh, the email address, whatever you want me to send announcements to, and you will start be getting a ton of announcements, your phone number and your address. If you could please add all that information in there for me. Anything else that's in there that you'd like to add, but basically your address and your phone number. The one nice thing um, is with all of our applications and things that you will need to use during tax time. The laptops and Chromebooks are all preset, so all the tabs will be at the top, get you into tax layer, get you into uh, county tables that you might need to figure out, Lancaster County taxes, whatever. All right, so everybody going to have their, informa their demographic information in. Next, I would like you to go to full schedules. Now this is a screenshot, so what you're seeing is probably different, but the tax law sessions that are scheduled for Thursdays, the 7th, 21st, 
I'm sorry, 7th, 14th, 21st, and December 5th should be listed in there. And on the right side is tax preparer, and on the right, the, I'm sorry, left side tax preparer, right side first year volunteer. You're, until you have completed your certification test, you will always be in as first year volunteer. You will not have the tax preparer um, status. So when we get into Lincoln Learn and I show you the certificate that I need, once I get that certificate, I can uh, go into the, I have to go into the system and change everything so that you'll be able to schedule as a tax preparer. Uh, you'll be able to uh, get access to Tax Slayer. So um, for right now, if you want to go ahead, this is, uh, PSP is pretty easy. It'll show you the dates that are available. When we start um, getting into sites, you'll see a long list of sites, you'll see a long list of dates. Um, and that's how you will go in and schedule whichever location you would like to work at. So for now, if you can go in, if you're going to be able to come to the morning session for the tax law, if you want to sign up now. If you plan on doing Zoom, no need to sign up for anything. Um, but if you are going to be coming for the morning session, I have to make sure I have plenty of coffee for everybody. Mm -hmm. I'm just curious, when do you picture handing out the 40, 12, or 12? 40, 12. Um, I just ordered them yesterday, and they usually come the first, second week of November. Um, we will have them at the Harrington office where you were for your uh, informational session 24-7, um, probably through the beginning of December. Whenever we get them, we just put them on our porch. There's a nice little okay. alcove, and you can just come and get them anytime you want. Cool. You can go online. Uh, the 4012 is available electronically for next year. The 6744, which is the test, is also available electronically. So if you want to go in, look at the questions, um, you can start answering the questions if you want to, if you want to get ahead. But those, those are available online. Where am I? Just Google um, 4012. Actually, I think Ed put it in that email that he sent out yesterday. The links to the 4012 and the 6744. Yeah, I asked them where they were. And what, what are the 4012 and the 6744? So the 4012 is the resources that we have available um, for you when you're doing taxes. If you have any questions, like, how do I determine if this person is a dependent? You can go to the 4012 that has a nice little walkthrough. Um, is it this person a child? Uh, is it a niece, a nephew? If yes, go here. If no, go here. So the 4012 will give you um, the answers to pretty much all of your questions. It's a, and it's a 400 page IRS oh, yeah. pub. So, okay. but just purely for VITA uh -huh. and how to use TaxLayer oh, cool. and other parts of your job. So it's kind of the be all end all of it. If you'd like to look yeah. at it, it was the copy. <laughs> of okay, last wow. Yeah. That's impressive. And the nice thing when we have our tax law trainings, our facilitator, Jared Miller, when he is going up and showing um, slides and what he, whatever the topic is that he is talking about, he will say, you can find this information in section E, page 12 of the 4012. So he, he really helps us to uh, give you a little bit more information, like where can you find it? Because yeah. like I think I had said earlier, we don't expect you to memorize and know everything. What we want is that you'll be able to figure out how to find it. Yes. There's also another publication, 4491, which is another resource, it's like, <laughs> I looked at it today, it's like 396 pages, so we won't print that out, and we don't get copies of that. But it's definitely a really good resource for um, tax law. And I'll show you some other ones in here as well. I, I'm just curious, is the idea that when we are, do most volunteer tax preparers have 4012 at you know, out with them when they're sitting down. Yes, they have it with a, with a client. Correct. If okay. it's not on the floor or not beside them, it's somewhere okay. in the back. Yes, that is something that everyone brings with. Well, 
I'm not going to say 100%, but most people bring that with them. Because what we want you to do is to find the answer yourself. And to, you know, um, we are, a, come on in Maria. Um, we do have site coordinators there. But again, a lot of the questions that people have, if they looked in the 4012, um, they would, would have found it. Anywhere, yeah. This is what the test book that you look like. And then this is the 4012 from last year. So it's tabbed out in there. But you basically carry this, but you, um, as far as the exam goes, you use 4491 to study and put answers out there for certification. But when you're at the site, 4012 mixes tax law and tax there together to help connect the dots based on what you see on the screen and what's in your tax book. So if you noticed here, my name is here, and then there is a cancel after it. So you can go in, cancel it. If it's the day before, you will not be able to cancel it on in VSP. You will need to call your site coordinator. And again, and we'll talk about this in a little bit, if something comes up, we understand. You know, we get life. So um, if somebody gets sick or you have to go out of town for whatever reason, we understand, but just let us know. And, you know, we do check VSP every day uh, as we're preparing for the next day. But um, if it's the day before, you won't be able to electronically change it. All right, and then if you go to my schedule, you'll be able to see everything that you have um, selected to schedule. Excuse me, you're supposed to do that for each each of the days? Correct, yeah. each of the days. Yeah. You just, okay. yeah, I was gonna say, just scroll down and you'll see yeah. them on there. Yeah. And then when you go to my schedule, everything that you selected should show up underneath here and it should say you are scheduled to serve. And if you notice here, you can cancel that as well at that section. But it'll list everything for you. What if you, is this used to, like if you know you're gonna be on vacation and so they can't schedule for something? You, yes, well this is actually, it's actually the opposite. You go in and you tell us when you're available. Okay. Yeah, to try to manage mm -hmm. 180 would be hard. So that's why you tell us when you're available by putting it in there. Okay. But you or somebody like you craft days that were open and that you need five people at Africa and three people there. And so you'll give a certain number of slots that Correct. you anticipate based Correct. on the people that have signed up. Right. Um, again, a little different. So. Um, for example, here at King Street this year, we will be having um, four appointments an hour. So I will go into VSP and I will set up the schedule so it's showing four appointments per hour. We do that for all of our sites, so it's ahead of time. Some site coordinators do it for the entire year, some do it for a month at a time, but you can go in here and check and you can see what's available, what shift is available. And um, if you go in and you want them to come here on a Tuesday night and we have four slots and there's four names in there, then it's not available. So we do ask our site coordinators, well actually I put the schedule in, but they tell me who, how many slots they want per hour, which day, um, what times. Okay, any questions on um, VSP? All right, so this is the one that I had mentioned, Think and Learn. This is where you will go in and do your certification test. Unfortunately, it's not working right now, but this is what it will like when you go to the, will look like when you go to um, the link. Um, you're gonna go into the part that says certification test, and you're gonna create an account. And this is the information you will need in order to create your account. So uh, you are a VITA volunteer, everything else after that is a no. Uh, do you want a site's coordinator, are you an instructor, a spec manager, um, do you plan to volunteer in the VITA program is yes. And then the training source, I apologize, I do not remember what it is, but I think it's either VITA or this is not that critical, but put something like VITA or TAXOL, um, whatever comes up. 
right? Then on, um, this is actually all on one page. But then again, put in the time zone we're in. This, the partner organization is the United Way of Lancaster County. You have zero years of volunteering. And then the last four, there's no info, uh, there's no info needed in any of those sections. Those are more four steps. But you're not looking for us to s you sign up for this yet. That's where we're you can't. The test. Okay. Correct. You can sign up for this. It's not open. Got it. Um, Mid-November-ish, this is where you'll need to go in and create an account, and then you'll go in and take the test. All right, so once you have all this information in, then you're going to hit register. And this is what you will see. This will be the page that pops up. This is from last year. Um, this is also um, an advanced, you will be basic. When you see basic, it'll, it'll say like 2025 basic exam. Um, you do need to do the volunteer standards of conduct and the intake interview and quality review exam. Those are the three that are showing there that you will need to take. All right. Uh, everyone has to do the standards of contact, uh, conduct, whether you're a greeter or a preparer or a site coordinator. Um, you will also need to do an intake and interview. When we um, get into Tax Slayer, I'm going to show you, and I'm going to have you look through these too, um, some different trainings on every aspect that's being tested in Link and Learn, you will find in Tax Slayer, as Ed mentioned. All right. And then the advanced exam, um, I'm sorry, the basic exam, you need to get a score of 85%, and you have two chances to take the test. You will be getting, uh, did Ed give this? The 6744 that Ed had shown has the actual test that you will take in Link and Learn. So you'll be able to practice. You, everyone will get a copy of that once we get them from the IRS. Yeah, all the certifications are in here, that's why. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. And the read test is in here as well. Yeah, so every test that you could potentially take in Lincoln Learn is in the 6744. And you will get a hard copy of that. But you can also get it online. It is and every year you take the same test to keep your certification? You have to take this certification test every year. I'm not sure if it's the exact same test every year, but yes. Okay. Yep, this is just good for tax season 2025. And it will tell you what your score is if you passed. Um, if you click, here it says um, print certificate. This will actually look like something you would get for passing or a special award or whatever. It is a certificate. We need to have something different and I'll show you what that is in a minute. So this is what you're going to see. Alright, so once you complete all the certifications, you can go in and sign it electronically. Uh, there will be uh, all the information that you put in as you're registering will show up on the um, certificate that they call it 13615. Um, but you go in and you sign it electronically. And then I don't know if you can see here, this is blue. This is where the link is where you click that to complete the agreement. And you can just save it as a PDF. You can print it if you'd like it. Um, you will need to send that to me. And you will also need to give a copy to whatever site coordinator uh, you, where you're working at, whatever site it is that you're working at, that coordinator will need a copy. So it has to be on site if we're ever audited. And I should say when we're audited. Like this past season, we had the IRS showed up at four of our sites. So they're nice people, very nice people. And they only want us to make sure that we're doing the best that we can. Um, they're not out to find every little mistake that you did wrong. Do, if I, if I typically just working effort all the time and mm -hmm. then you really needed somebody down here to work, do you just, do most people just send a PDF to that site yeah. coordinator or we, we don't necessarily physically have to walk in the door and no, hand no. them? But there are some people that prefer to do that. So okay. either way, I don't care if it's paper or electronic. Um, for me, I need that so that I can change your status in a bunch in uh, tax layer and in uh, the SP. What happens if you don't pass the test after two times? Come back next year. 
Ed, what happens if you don't pass the test two times? <laughs> um, <laughs> work for ARPs. <laughs> yeah, they, um, I think you only get two attempts. And yeah. But you have the test ahead of time. Oh, so yeah. You can, you can use the And it's open notes. notes. Oh, yeah. It's open book. Open yes. Google. Open Google. Yeah. yeah. No time limit. <laughs> no time limit. Nope. Yeah, so I mean, if you want to get together with somebody, um, I did that with one of my uh, uh, my assistant director who was here a couple years ago. We took the test separately, then we got together and we said, now again, we made a lot of assumptions <laughs> that when we have, that because our uh, questions, uh, I mean, the answers matched, we assumed that was the correct one. But the ones where we didn't, then we went into the book, we went into 4012, we went into the resources to see if we could figure out why we didn't match. So that was something that we did. But, and that's the whole purpose is that you know where to go to get the answer. All right, so then this is what the 13615 will look like. Um, the IRS is always telling you exactly what is in every field. This page is what that is. I do not need a copy of this. I only need a copy of the page that has your name and address on it, and that you pass the test. All right. All right, Tax Slayer. Any, well, let me go back. Any questions with Lincoln Learn? Like I said, I will let you know once it's up and running. Um, I would expect you might want to wait a day or so, because everybody and their brother is also going to be aware that Lincoln Learn is up and running. Um, and that every, they'll be inundated, but um, yeah. All right, tax layer. This should be a tab at the top of your laptop, um, and it should say Practice Lab. Everyone um, get on to tax layer. So you said practice? Practice Lab, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. This is where you put it. Okay. Oh, yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. Click on the plus. Yeah. Working with a club. Yeah. And, uh, you know, like they went, went into the lab. Like you went into the live system. Go over to you're trying to, you know, so, just so you know, we are going to go into the tax layer. You're going to get your account. Um, as you want to, you can go in and play around with this. There is nothing that you can do to hurt it. You can put fake numbers in, have all kinds of fun with it. But you should all be at this um, page. All right, the password is train pro web. Do all caps? All caps, yeah, that's right here. Okay. okay. Train pro web. This, this is, well, you may use it again, but. You do not have to go through this every time when you go to a site. Okay. The next, you should see um, the sign-in sheet. You want to create an account. Can you go back to the class on the side? Sure. Yeah. It should be on your handout. I try, I, you have, everything that's on the slides is in your, uh, your handout there. All right, so create an account. I see some of you already going at it. All right, so um, again, you will need a couple different things. You'll need the program type, which is VITA, and you will need a site identification number, um, and that is also on the page there if you have a difficulty reading it. S2501132. When you create a password, it has to be 15 characters. All right? So it has to have a minimum of 15 and a uh, max of 25. Um, it has to have at least one uppercase alphabet, one lowercase alphabet, one number, and one special character. Give you a few minutes here. Oh 
when I get to the screen, and it shows all the resources that are in there. Do you oh, want yeah, to talk, one, yeah. you want to talk a little bit about it? Okay. I will tell you um, the site identification number. This is uh, that number that's listed as for King Street. Each location will have its own sit-in, um, and it is automatically in the system attached to you when we create an account for you. So if you're going to Ephrata, when we create an Ephrata account, the Ephrata sit-in will be um, associated with your name. When a return is printed, your name is not printed anywhere on the document. It will have the sit-in, and it will have the United Way of Lancaster County logo. So as I mentioned earlier, um, our volunteers have no liability. Your name's not put anywhere. You may have, I've had people call back in and say, the, the tax preparer didn't sign the return. I'm like, yeah, they, they don't have to, so it's fine. And then when you get to this page, let me know. So the username, um, can it have special characters? The username, we create the usernames for TaxLayer. No, you still on Practice Lab. Oh, for Practice Lab? Like the user account. Yeah. Yeah, you can create that. I don't think you can start with one now. Yeah, I don't. It's only the password that has to have all that information. So you can, yeah. like, I think mine is Kim Maldonado, is my name, so, Kim Maldonado, for my username. Oh, okay. Whatever this, you can keep the user, just whatever this uh, password is, the characteristics have to be one of those four options. Yeah. One of which four options? That are, username already exists. That, where it has. Oh, the username. Uh, no, at the bottom, the characteristics, those are the only ones you can use. So you can yes, put exclamation point yes, in yes, yes. Valid. I got you. Yeah, you can only use one of those. And it's only those five options or six options that they give you. Yeah. But yes, the username, I, I use my name. That doesn't have to have anything special in it. And like I said, you only have to do this one time. Because when you log into TaxSlayer Live, uh, it will ask you for your username and your password. But if you noticed on the sheet that I gave you, it says username for site one, site two, site three. So the username will be different for the site than what you put in here. So this username is only for the practice lab and only for the first time. Am I confusing you? I can't get my password to it. Once you register, this is what should pop up. I gotta fill in the account info first, right? Yes, she just got it. Okay. Sorry. No problem. So on this, the other sheet there, um, Charlie, mm -hmm. I have a place for people to put all their passwords in. There. Oh, yeah. That was the first one? Or was that the. Yeah. Yeah. And VSP, you should already have, so. Just don't have Lincoln Learn yet. Thank you. All right, I'm going to ask Ed. Well, we'll wait. Is everybody here? So you still, you just about there? Oh, oh. Marcy, you oh, there? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. A ton of resources. There's uh, also. There's tons of other things out there. If you were to go and Google um, Vital Resources, you would get a lot of different things. But Tax Slayer, this is what we use, so it just makes sense to, to use uh, their practice lab and all of the modules. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna look at, um, gonna have Ed uh, show you some of these. Unfortunately, this is a static um, picture, so but you should be able to go in and look at these. At, and those of you that are watching at home, you should be able to go in also and uh, select the options to look at what Ed's mentioning. All right, 
So before you click here where it says go to practice area, on sections four, five, and six, you should be able to scroll down to your laptop. Those are actual tutorials on how TaxLayer looks and how to enter the information. So if you have a W-2, well, how do I put that in TaxLayer? There's information in these modules that shows you step-by-step. -step. Schedule C's, um, amended returns, everything you need to know. And then on the far right in section six, when you scroll down, um, one, in, one, two, and three are basic tax return examples that you can use for practice. And then four through seven, I believe, are advanced. So if you want to do a practice turn outside of the test, that's syntax there. They have videos. So basically what it is, it's like you're watching like this and their cursor's going through, clicking on this, explaining every single thing. So it helps you work through tax layer. So when you go through, don't just skip that part. Don't go straight here. Watch those modules in four, five, and six to get more preparation for tax layer. Because even in the 4012, it's like screenshots, but it doesn't tell you how to put that information in and how things should flow through. So that is key. So if you ever want extra training or know-how in your own pace, this is where it's done. I'm just curious, with the practice return, is there a right answer? Like, yes, you tell did. you if yes, you did it yes, right? Yes, okay. yes, yes, that's all cool. in there, yes. This is all to help you learn. So you go through, and then on the next slide, it has actual answers, what the return should look like, um, how the form should be entered and everything. Because I know a lot of um, new preparers come in, like, well, I need more practice. This is where you get your practice in that. I need practice with tax layer. This is where you get your practice with tax layer. I need help learning how to put this in. This is where you go. This is all in there. Step-by-step -step process. And you can control. I mean, it's open as long as you have your um, login. So go ahead and go back up where he told you not to click. I'm going to tell you to click. Where it says go to the practice area. And then what you are going to do is the first one is to start a new 2023 tax return. <coughs> and then it will pop up with um, a place to put in the social security number. And that's where if an individual is new, um, let me go back. If an individual has served us, uh, have, we've served them before, when you put in the social security number, their account will pop up and all of their demographic information and, and their other information that's in their prior return will um, go into the new return. If they've never been with us before, then you'll have to enter everything. Um, I tell people we had a one of our tax preparers was working on a return and you know like he was taking him forever i'm like you know what was going on heart what happened and he's like she had 13 w-2s and i had to hand enter every single one of them so <laughs> you will have people like that um and there's a, a new function that's coming out one of the things that we have found um is that we had a fair number of rejections um because the IRS identified that that particular return needed an IP pin, which is a security pin that if there was fraud on someone's account, the government, the IRS will um, assign a six digit pin. Well, people, we were going through and that option was after you go through a couple sections and people were like, oh, I have no idea what that is, so no, I don't have one. Well, they, <laughs> We complete the return, we file it, and we get a rejection saying that yes, they did have one. So we have to then find the person and then, you know, hey, we need your six to, I don't have one, I have no idea what you're talking about. Like where you're gonna have to go online and you're gonna have to get this pin because we cannot submit your return until we have this pin. So now I was just getting, I don't, I'm sure they haven't perfected it quite yet, but, um, so what will happen now is once the return is started, you will get a pop-up box that says, hey, Kim Maldonado, now, excuse me, my name, Kim Maldonado had a six-digit security number. You're going to need that to complete. So it's, it's going to be nice because it's going to uh, cut down on rejections. It's going to cut down on time having to, you know, call the person and say, hey, where's this at? We haven't. 
made a decision, we haven't really talked about it, that if they don't, more than likely what will happen, because we can't submit it, um, is that we can complete the return, and once they have the six digit number come back, we can enter it and then submit for, um, for processing. So again, that part, not 100% sure how each place will handle it. Um, my thinking from my site would be, we'll complete it, but you gotta get us that number. So use this, have fun with this. Um, you can put any numbers that you want in there and uh, just kind of fool around with it, see what you think, um, and have some fun playing with it. So this, these next few slides, I'm just going to go through some general information, and um, the majority of our sites follow some of these processes. Some have a little bit of different process, but you'll find that out when you do your site orientation. And if you need to miss a, miss a session, it's not a problem. You can update your information in VSP, or if it's short notice, just let your site coordinator know. Um, clients usually start arriving about 15 minutes to a half an hour, so we ask that you arrive early, particularly for the morning. I, for example, I live in Elizabethtown. Sometimes it's snowing where I live, but it's not snowing in Ephrata, and vice versa. So, so what I do is I allow the site coordinator to say, okay, hey, we're going to close or we're not going to close. Or we're going to be open and whoever can get in can get in. Um, and that's usually, there are a number that will be open regardless. <laughs> there will be some that say, okay, uh, we'll open at 12 o'clock and we'll be here until 5. Um, but we find that if the snow's in the morning, you know, most of the time roads are passable by like 11, 12 o'clock, again, depending on depth and where you live. But it's pretty much at the um, discretion of the site coordinator. Now, if you feel uncomfortable, Driving in the snow, you don't come in. You just let your site coordinator know that you're not going to be in. And, you know, we have a fair number of clients who won't come in. We have those that will be there no matter what. So, if, and we've always found that it balances out, you know, that if there's two preparers in there, then clients, you know. I remember one time, the, my first year, we were at a location in Ephraim. And uh, it was like the first week or the first day, and we had snow, and everybody just sat there until the. I had I know there was a couple people that sat there for two hours, but they waited for the preparer to get in. So again, it'll be at the discretion of your site coordinator, so you'll check with them. Uh, we will give you a, a name tag that has to be worn at all times while you're uh, at the site. Uh, it will have your your name on it, your just your first name. It won't have your last name. Um, your position, if you're uh, an advanced tax preparer, or basic tax preparer, um, and if, I don't have tax preparer, and then if you're advanced or basic. And those all have to be warm. We have a little lanyard for you. Uh, again, if the uh, IRS comes in, they will expect to see them. Um, you will, each site will normally have greeters that will be there during the entire shift, sometimes we don't, and so tax repairers will also act as readers from time to time, um, but they will have the clients fill out the intake and interview form. Uh, we'll be doing a little bit of a training on that. It's changing this year, so for you guys this will be new, so you'll have nothing to compare it to. Um, but, um, let's see, yeah, so the greeter will kind of check for eligibility based on how the client answers a question, each question has either an A or a B behind it. So if the client answers any question, even if it's just one, with an A, then the client will need to have an advanced tax preparer. If um, everything is a B, then they can have a basic. Um, a typical sequence is the client arrives, fills out the form, the greeter reviews everything, makes sure they have social security card for everyone that's on the return. So the kids won't be there, but if they're, if it's a, um, a marital, husband and wife must be there together, all right? And if they have five kids, then we have to have every single social security card for all five kids, 
there are any other dependents on the return, we have to have Social Security cards for those as well. Medicare cards don't work. Um, the greeter will also kind of, you know, organize forms. You will find people come in in different uh, manners of organization. There will be those that have everything in a nice folder and it's divided by uh, W-2s, by 1099s, by whatever other form they have. Then you will have others that come in with a plastic grocery bag full of envelopes that haven't even been opened and there's receipts in there and there's all kinds of other mail in there and you'll have to go through it. Um, so again, some breeders do that, not everyone, but we do try to do that. Um, yeah, so once everything's organized, um, you can work from the intake form. That part of the process is going over the intake form, making sure that you look at all the answers to know what other questions you might need to ask, or just to get some information. I have an example where we had a client that came in, didn't have everything to begin with, so she was trying to get all of her documentation, we went through the, through the whole entire return. We get to the, one of the very last questions, and um, she asks, oh, well, yeah, my, my son was uh, with us. And we asked, well, does he pay rent or anything? She's like, oh, yeah. Renters are out of scope for Vita. So that whole hour plus was a waste because that question wasn't asked at the beginning. So with the intake form, hopefully all questions that you need to have answered are on that form. But you will get a rhythm. You'll get to know, oh, I need to ask about this, I need to ask about this. Um, but as you see the intake form, you'll learn which questions you might need to, um, to ask based on how they answer. Um, if, you, if, you have any, if you question anything about the paperwork, just ask. Um, sometimes. People will give an answer and then you say, oh, well, that's not going to qualify you. And then I'll say, oh, well, what about this? And then it will qualify you. Again, that is something that uh, it is the responsibility of the, of the client. We're just taking the information. If you really feel uncomfortable about doing something, check with your site coordinator because you do not need to any, do anything that you feel uncomfortable doing. Um, the client will consent. Um, to disclose information that is on the back page of the intake form. Uh, they will need to sign it. We um, will use information from the client, but all we will not ever use names or birth dates or addresses. What we are using is um, the amount of the refund, the number of dependents, the amount of a tax credit. Um, because those are some of the things that we have to report to our funders and also we, that we need to report to the IRS. But we will never ever give out any kind of demographic information. So if they ask about, well, what am I consenting for, it's just to be able to um, use that information. There will be two other times where the client will have to sign. The first one is to sign for um, giving us consent to file federal return, and then also giving us consent to file a state return. And then of course they'll sign the, the actual uh, return. Um, so after the return is processed, it has to be quality reviewed. Some places have specific individuals that do quality reviews. Some places do peer reviews. We do peer reviews here. Uh, we also have a site coordinator who will check if he's available. Um, but as you're completing it, as the site, as it's being quality reviewed, you will see in Tax Slayer there are what they call tags, and you have to mark that it's complete. Uh, you will set the uh, the different tags that you need, and uh, you'll also have to document who the QR was. We will know who completed the return, but we won't know who did the QR. Uh, so you will have to document that. There is a note section for that. There's lots of tags, lots of little thing in, things in there. When we start to go out into the community, we use a tag for to kind of, we will use the same Tax Slayer account, um, which is the EFIN number, um, but then there are sit-ins and each location has its own sit-in. But we also, um, 
we'll put in tags for something to make it more specific, like uh, Wernersville State Hospital, for example. We do returns um, for those individuals. We do a community friendship, so there was a tag that we put in there, even though we're using a different location in essence. Um, it's only a one-time thing, but we do need to know how many we did for Wernersville, so we put a tag in there, and you will see that. One of the other benefits of volunteering for us is that you are able to do returns for friends and family. Uh, does not matter what the uh, income level is, um, because you will identify that return with a friends and family tag so that we know we don't touch that. Now, there may be times if it's sitting there and it's not, uh, it's incomplete, I might say, you know, hey Kim, you need to check on this. I see it's a friends and family. I don't go in and, and bother with those at all. Um, but it is something that if you have, you know, some, you have your mother or brother that you're gonna do their taxes for, you can do them for free. And it does not matter what the threshold is of their, their income or anything else. As long as you feel comfortable doing it, you can use our software to do it. I have a question. Um, mm -hmm. So when you were saying about the renters, if it could, it's considered a business, right? And we don't do business. What about with friends and family? Do that? Yeah, she could do it for friends and family, but no. So, so renters is military only, mm -hmm. as far as our program goes. Um, because it deals with depreciation and some other stuff. So why it sets the scope based off uh, what they want us to do, what they well, don't want us to do. The thing is, when you do friends and family, you do whatever you want to do. That's fully on you. Like you take accountability for that return outside the scope of item. Yeah. yeah. But so if you're doing, fun. yeah, if you're doing a return that's out of scope, instead of friends and family, that's you taking the full Accountability on the tax knowledge applied to that. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, we do, when we're finished preparing a return, um, we will print out a copy of everything for the client. Uh, like I said, we file federal and state electronically, so each client will get a copy of federal and state uh, paper print. But for Lancaster County and for the tax rebate, uh, the rent rebate and tax, uh, property tax, we will print out two copies of it, and one copy will have to be mailed into Lancaster County and into the state um, for uh, that individual. We're not able to buy stamps or purchase stamps um, to mail those in. But we do provide the envelope, we put the um, address on it, everything. Um, we don't keep any documents whatsoever. Um, they will take everything that they bring in, we'll go home if we find something, I will sometimes, I will try to contact the client and let them know that I have it, um, but I don't keep it more than three days. If they don't get back to me, I, I shred it. We give them a nice big envelope that will have their name, it will have the site where they had their taxes prepared, it will have the tax year, and everything they brought in, everything that we gave them will go in that envelope, so it's a nice system for them to keep everything all together. Uh, we get really excited when people walk in bringing those envelopes, because it's like, yes, if we have any questions, we always have the paper copy to check it out and see when they ask us, well, why didn't I get more this year than um, I got last year, or you know, whatever the question may be. Um, when you log into TaxSlayer Live, there will be a multi-factor authentication, meaning you will put in your um, username and the password, and then you will get a six-digit code that you, they will ask for uh, once your information is correct. Uh, you can have that emailed to you, or you can have it sent to you on your cell phone. And when we set up your TaxSlayer accounts, we'll ask you how you would like to get that information. Um, I forgot to change the date here. Uh, do you know what the date is when we can start e-filing? It's usually around the middle of January. We can do all the taxes that we want at uh, the beginning of January, but we can't send them electronically until the IRS gives us the go-ahead. Last year it was January 18th, so I'm assuming it's going to be somewhere around that date for 2025. Same thing for uh, child tax credits. Anyone who receives those 
there will be a delay in them getting their refund. The IRS needs to verify certain information before they will release the funds. So just so um, people know that. Um, most refunds are expected to be issued within 21 days of processing. I've seen it less than that. I've seen it like two weeks, but we tell people two to three weeks. Anything that has to be sent in via paper, I would say probably four to five months. Um, and that does happen where we have to send some things in uh, via paper. If you have a family and friend return, you do not need to have anybody quality review it. If you are working at a site and working with one of our clients, all returns have to be quality reviewed for accuracy and correctness. Um, and with family and friends, there's no scope limitation and there's no income limitation. When you get your 4012, there'll be a nice page in there that says, these situations are out of scope. So it's probably good to get familiar with all the ones that are out of scope and we're not able to do. So we just want to encourage, you know, clients to refer their family and friends. We have, I don't have it in here, but we have a nice little card that you can give out to folks that say, hey, free tax services, you're going to call 211 and here's, you know, the information. We do start um, accepting or start scheduling appointments January 1st. Um, we, I actually think I, and there was a gentleman that came in yesterday and did he want to schedule his taxes for next year already? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so we have a few people that they're anxious. When do you actually start doing the returns? Uh, it is different for each site. So, for example, Ephrata starts the third week. They're the first ones. They always start the third week of January. Pretty much everyone else starts the fourth week of January. Uh, we have a couple of nursing homes where we start the mid to end of February because a lot of those don't, those individuals don't have like their 1099s and their retirement information because that doesn't have to be sent out or received until the end of February. Um, but yeah, most, most places, there are a few places that start the beginning of February. Uh, like we will start either the first or second week. Here because I like to make sure everybody else is up and going and they have everything they need and then we start working here. Um, but yeah. Any other questions? And to answer your question, we do business returns, but we don't do business losses. That's not in school. Oh. Mm -hmm. So if you do do a return, they want to claim the business loss. They want to be for friends and family. But if a client came in, Anyone to claim a loss, we can't do the return. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like they do a lot of Uber and Lyft, those type of things. And that's probably. Were you going to say something, Rob? So, and he has training coming up, four <coughs> sessions, guessing a lot of the 4012 pub stuff. But then, what's, what's the January train? Like, then, what are the other trainings after that? Because I hear you when you're talking about documents, but I don't know whether, like, I'm allowed to accept um, a scan of a social security card or whether it has to be the physical thing that looks legit or, you know, like some of that thou shall yes. do it this way. So a lot of people don't like, well, answer the question about social security. And again, this is something that each site coordinator could have a little bit different um, opinion on. A lot of people will have a copy of it on their phone. That's fine. Um, if they have already been, if they come in, don't have their social security card, but we did their taxes last year, mm -hmm. tells me that somebody verified it last year and as long as the numbers match, that's fine. Um, as far as a photocopy, yes, I've taken photocopies because again, people, they don't want to carry that, you know, in their wallets. Um, the trainings in November are, are tax law trainings. In December, we will be doing some training on uh, using Tax Slayer if you don't feel comfortable because you will need to answer three, there'll be three scenarios in the test and you will have to go on to Tax Slayer and complete a return to get your answers for those scenarios. So we want you to be, feel at least comfortable. That's why I'm saying go into you know, the practice lab, fool around with the return. It is not similar to, say, TurboTax, where TurboTax has these 
cute little characters that pop up and say, do you have any kids? Did you change this? They're, the expectation is you're going to know where you have to put certain information into TaxSlayer. Um, but it, it is helpful in that if you miss a field that's required, it won't let you go to the next page and it'll pop up and say you're missing something. So there are some of those things, but it's not, like I said, like a TurboTax where it, it holds your hand and walks you through it. So we will do some of those trainings and then in the, in the beginning of January we will have like some practice lab time where people can come in, we'll have some other scenarios. Because we found that the more returns you do, the more comfortable you're going to feel. You know, so come in and if you, we'll have the, Ed will have the answers and if they don't match, then we'll go help you go back and look and see, you know, what happens where, I mean, sometimes you just skip a number or you invert numbers or whatever, but we'll go back and, and that's part of the QR process. So, so if I, so I signed up for the November trainings and then I got an email from Edward. So what are your trainings? So Jared does federal. The test is on federal. He prepares you for federal. State and local isn't covered by Jared, so I cover state and local. Yeah. Okay. There's so, no certification for state and local, so we just do the training. So when, he, when are your training? The second and third week of January. So I think. Oh, the second and third week of January. I think yeah. it's like this. The first, it's like the sixth through the eleventh, and then whatever that third week is, that Monday through Friday. Yeah, we'll send that schedule out so we can post it. Yeah, because the reason that we do, um, we wait to do state and um, local and PA 1000 is if you don't pass the federal part, you don't need to take the rest of it. So we don't want you to do extra what you don't have to do. And your, your notes said you're doing training since August and through the end of October. Was no, those are, no, those are my Monday trainings. Because someone asked for the schedule and everything or the dates, and I was um, saying I've been doing the Mondays, trainings from Monday as of August, September, and October. That was more, um, someone sent me something on the side, so I just was filling in that blank. Yeah. Oh, okay. that, that, those sessions are more for veteran, um, oh, people yeah. that have already done it and have one year okay. under their belt. Um, <coughs> next year, if you would like to participate in those, if you so anxious to come back, we're, we're doing some other modules, like he mentioned military and foreign student. Uh, those are things that we traditionally have not done. Uh, we don't, for the military, the folks that take that, they have use of it. They have folks that they do return to the military. We don't necessarily advertise that we do military uh, because it is different. And we don't really have a lot of folks around here. Um, so we've never really had the need. We have had the need to do more for foreign students. So we are going to be looking at that, and anyone that's interested in taking that training can. Um, again, it's probably something that you might want to do next year, although Rob, you've been doing them forever. You may want to do foreign students this year. You know, if you have that experience, I'm okay with that. But um, that's what those trainings are that Ed's doing. Now that you guys are in um, VSP, you will see my name pop up a lot. <laughs> so I'm just warning you. Um, I like to communicate. I like people to know what's going on. And if you have any questions, feel free to respond. Ask them, let me know. Um, and I will try to get you the information as best I can. And I'm guessing if, if you're new, but you're ambitious and you're an accountant or you use tax, you know, you work for tax later or whatever, you if the more of us that can go for the advanced certification the first year and pass it, that would be helpful, right? Correct. And, you know, we, we're asking for at least the basic. And let's say you do the basic, you start doing returns, and you're like, I can do more. Go, you can take it again. You can take the next test. You don't have to take it all at one time. Um, but if you feel like, I mean, because we do, we have a number of CPAs, that, and I imagine that they did um, advance their first year too. Uh, we had, I don't know how many, I want to say at least seven or eight. We had 23 new folks last year and I want to say at least seven or eight did advanced. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's up to you. We're not going to say, sorry, you cannot do advanced, no. That's, that's not our expectation. But if you feel comfortable doing it, by all means.
All right. Um, thanks so much for coming. Anyone that's watching the video, um, if you want to continue, uh, please email me and let me know. My email is right there in the presentation. And Ed, do you have something else? I just wanted to introduce them to the website that was in the link that I sent out. Um, you go to the web browser. So you might want to write down, yeah. Yeah, see it's that link, but I'm going to give you the actual address. Because you clicked on the link in the email and it would have sent you there. But I'll give you the actual address. Um, H-T-P-S colon double forward slash A-P-P-S dot I-R-S dot gov forward slash A-P-P forward slash VITA. V I T A. And you click on that. You type that in the browser. Because this is help a lot with the tutorials. This is like prep work for the actual exam. So that was HTTPS slash slash apps IRS. Go. Right there. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much.